quick, wanted to talk to you a little bit about how all of this applies to nutrition. Now, I think nutrition is an incredibly important thing that is being lost in a lot of today's food culture, primarily because we now have access to a lot of processed, a lot of refined um, foods, and, and consequently, those end up being so cheap that a lot of people are eating them, and it's causing a lot of health problems. So I wanted to address a little bit, from a molecular level, what's going on, and what we can do to improve some of our eating habits. Now. A lot of you have probably heard in the past uh, decade or so, diabetes has become a huge problem with a lot of Americans. So what exactly is going on there? Now, a lot of you probably know uh, some things associated with diabetes, right? Like insulin, blood sugar. But, but how are those related? Well, here's the problem. Our bodies have been developed and have evolved over millions of years for a very specific diet. And one of the things in that diet is that a lot of the food we find naturally is pretty complex. For example, most of the sugars that we have are polysaccharides, specifically this amylopectin, this branched structure. Well, what happens when you put this into your body? Well, it takes a long time for your body to chew off little bits of the sugar and turn that into energy. Now, that's really good for us because <clears throat> the longer it takes our body to process it, the better we are going to use it. Now, here's, here's an example. I want you to think of a manufacturing plant. Now, what goes into this plant are cars. And the cars are taken in, they're disassembled, and then all of their parts go into making a new product. Now let's say one of the guys in this manufacturing line, his job is specifically to process the hubcaps. Now for the longest time throughout our evolution, when we eat, we get the whole car, so to speak. That is, these big molecules that need to be broken down, and it breaks them down very slowly. So, our hubcap guy is used to getting hubcaps at a certain rate, and is very used to processing them. Our bodies are used to getting sugars, carbohydrates, at a very specific rate, and breaking them down and dispersing them as such. Here's the problem. With a lot of the, the invention of processed foods, of refined sugar, for example, refined sugar is just taking single glucose molecules and throwing them into your body. Well, all of a sudden, your guy that was used to getting four hubcaps an hour has a hundred hubcaps. What is he going to do? Well, your body has mechanisms for dealing with that. He's not going to sit there and let his hubcaps back, back up. He's going to say, I'm going to take these four hubcaps and I'm going to store the other 96. Now, here's the problem. He's not going to do those four hubcaps and then go to the 96 that he's stored. He's then going to go to four new hubcaps. Well, what happens with those stored hubcaps? They stay there until he is out of other hubcaps and can go get them, just like with our body. As you eat these refined foods, and this doesn't just apply to carbohydrates, it applies to fats, it applies to proteins. If you put in a whole bunch of carbohydrates that are already processed, juice, colas are great examples. You're throwing in a whole bunch of already processed, already broken down sugar, and your cells are going to say, whoa, I'll take this much, but store the rest of this. There's two problems with that. First, guess what it's stored as? You guessed it, it's fat. Nobody likes fat, okay? Not only does it not feel good and it doesn't look great at the beach, but it's really unhealthy for you. It can lead to a lot of heart disease. The other problem here is your hubcap guy gets essentially uh, shipping notices. He gets a little notice that says, hey, there's a bunch of hubcaps incoming. Open your doors. Think of it like a, an email 
that you get before a package ships. Now, normally, he gets four of these. T looks at him, says, all right, cool. Just want to make sure all four. But all of a sudden, he's just inundated with a hundred of these. Well, if you got a hundred emails all at once, would you look at them? If you answered yes, you're wrong. Get with the rest of us, okay? <laughs> you're going to start ignoring some of them. And that is what we call insulin resistance. Insulin is the molecule that goes to your cells and says, hey, there's some sugar coming in. Well, if you get a whole bunch of insulin released because there's a whole bunch of sugar, guess what? Your cells are going to start ignoring that insulin. Meaning one of two things. Either you need way more insulin to be able to absorb all the sugar that you're putting out. Or you need to eat less sugar. Preferably the first one. Okay? That is what we refer to as type 2 diabetes, and it's becoming a huge problem in America. Now, thank you for listening to the bonus bit. Uh, if you would like a few points of extra credit, uh, there will be an assignment posted. Uh, it'll be something about, uh, you know, what you did, took notes on this, what you learned. Uh, there will be details in it. But again, thanks for watching.